probably uh, probably gave you guys as much trouble last year as any team you played. They're the only team that beat you twice. What what was it that they did in in those games that that gave you such problems? I think there were a lot of things that that they did well that we didn't do well. Uh, we didn't execute down there. It was a disaster. We didn't execute at all at either end. So really, much not much to say about that game. The game here, I thought we fought uh, coming back. You know, I thought we did some good things. I thought some guys played well, but we didn't have a good first half. Uh, so we got, you know, we got to do a better job rebounding the ball. Uh, got to be a little more physical. Coach, next question comes from Mark Emmert. Yeah, Fred, I wanted to ask you about your uh, press this year. Um, what have you seen out of that, how effective it's been, and, and how, what that can do for you going forward? You know, it, it, it's been good, Mark, at times, but it hasn't been good at times. And I think that's what's disappointing. It hasn't been consistent. Uh, but you're right. We, we've gotten some stuff out of it. I thought it was pretty good on Saturday. That's a good sign. It's a really good team. Uh, you know, I think we need success with it moving forward. And we've got some young guys in there that I think are figuring it out. Uh, but I think it'll be good to us over the course of the rest of the season. Mike Collapse. Brian, what do you think of Purdue as a program? I, I think a lot of things, Mike, you know, they, they execute really well. They run their stuff. They share the ball. Uh, they defend. They rebound. Uh, they can play fast. They can play slow. You know, they, uh, they do a really good job of, of getting the ball to their, their, their good players. You know, some years it's big. Some years it's guards. Some years it's both usually have a little bit of an inside outside punch, which they do this year. So yeah, I think it's a lot of things. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Fran, obviously starting Big Ten play now, you got 20 games scheduled. Um, I'm sure you saw the results over the weekend. Uh, Rutgers beats Illinois, and Northwestern beats Michigan State. You say this every year, it's the best league in the country, but obviously this year it really is. Uh, what is it that distinguishes this league this year, you think? Well, you know, I pretty much say the same thing every year. It's top to bottom. You know, I, I don't know what, why anybody would be surprised about what Rutgers is doing. They did it last year. You know, I think as it relates to Northwestern, you could see that, you could see that coming. They were really young last year. They had a couple injuries. They had good recruiting class and they had some good freshmen and sophomores last year. So now you're seeing those guys now be sophomores and juniors. So it, it's not surprising. Uh, you know, they almost beat Michigan State last year. And I think, you know, Bowie had 30 last year. So, uh, you know, it's just indicative of, of the quality of players and coaches in this league top to bottom uh, that separates it from other leagues. Other leagues have really good teams and we have really good teams, but every team in our league is really good. And uh, that's the difference. Chad Lystico. Hey, Fran. Um, feels like Jordan's three pointers, you know, probably had 20 or so go in and out this year. What do you, what do you tell him right now to, he's a 28%. Well, you know, Chad, I won't tell him anything different. I mean, you know, I trust him. Just keep firing. Uh, you know, he, he made seven to beat North Carolina. That, you know, tells you what he's made of. We already know that. Uh, so, I, you know, I have complete confidence in him. You know, he takes good shots. He's really done a good job, I think, running the offense. He had a few more turnovers Saturday than he normally does. I mean, he's never been a turnover guy at all. And his assist numbers are really good. So, uh you know, I just think the more games he gets under his belt, the better he'll play. Rick Brown. Hey, friend, would you say that uh, your team's defense will be more important than anything going forward here in Big Ten play? That or that, you know, you know, I think I think rebounding. 
And I guess they probably go hand in hand, Rick, you know, uh, but uh, we got to do a better job on the glass. Mike Colas. Not asking you to talk about the game Friday at Minnesota, but about playing it. Uh, it sounds like that people around the Big Ten were, were in agreement about it. How did you and your program feel about it? We were all in from the beginning, Mike. You know, I think, you know, when, when the discussion first began about playing on Christmas, uh, there were a lot of factors, uh, not the least of which is, you know, we're trying to stay in a pseudo bubble. And as hard as that is, in particular, at Christmas time, when everybody wants to see their families, you know, just really trying to limit as much as we can, where we go, who we see. Uh, and if we're going to be here over the break, then we need to play games. Uh, you know, we're kind of locked in now. They come every couple days. Uh, we left some time on the back end in case we have to postpone and reschedule. Uh, but we were all in from the beginning, going back to June, that we want to play these games. We want to stay together and we want to stay healthy. And we're going to be mature about it. I think every coach in America wants their kids to have the opportunity to be home for Christmas and be with their family. So, you know, I think every coach wants to be with his family. Uh, you know, and we won't be, I won't be. Uh, so it's, it's a unique year. But I think the other thing is, uh, for a while, it looked like the NBA wasn't going to play and we were going to take those, uh, that window of opportunity to showcase college basketball. And the NBA decided to come back Back, which is great. You know, that's a tradition, uh, NBA games on television. But uh, the other networks were anxious for our games as well. Uh, so there was no decrease in interest in our games after the NBA decided to come back. So I think everybody was excited to play games in that window. And, and we all made a decision that we would stay together and stay healthy and, you know, limit what we do, where we go until this season's over. Chad. Hey, Fran, something I wanted to ask you about. Um, uh, Frederick went out with two fouls. It was like a one point game and, and uh, obviously didn't return the rest of the half. Is When you look back on that, do you kind of understand his importance in stabilizing the, the team when he's not out there? Yeah, you know, and we, we really, we discussed putting him back in you know, I feel like we've got enough veteran guys. We've got enough versatility that we can survive it. You know, we survived it when Luca got in foul trouble first half of the uh, Iowa State game. So there's times when we will reevaluate that, but I really don't want him to get hamstrung with three fouls and, 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 and have a difficult time in the second half. I thought his first foul, uh, you know, I thought he was straight up. Uh, so that was disappointing. It's hard enough guarding Suggs, who's a really good player. You know, that was his assignment. So I want him to be able to, you know, play most of the second half if he could. We have time for a couple more questions for Coach. Rob Howe. Fran, that was obviously a big stage on Saturday. I'm sure your guys were disappointed. How have they responded to that? Or if you haven't been around them much, how do you expect them to respond to that? Yeah, I mean, it, Yesterday was business as usual. I mean, we got home Saturday night. Uh, you know, we didn't do anything then. Obviously, we, we uh, as a staff, we did. You know, we, we gave the players the rest of that night off. And yesterday, we had a lot of film, shooting, lift, practice, that kind of stuff. So it's really... No, it doesn't matter if we won or lost. It's just, you know, business as usual. Okay, final, or we got two more questions. David Eicholt. Yeah, Fran, for guys like Luca and Joe who have been around this league and experienced losses and bouncing back, it seems like it's just routine for them. But, you know, for the younger guys like Patrick and Keegan who are still new to the, the Big Ten scene, uh, how – is it difficult for younger players to really move on from, from the first loss of the season? And if so, just how have you seen Keegan and Patrick and some of those younger guys actually respond? Yeah, I, I think it's more a function of, of how did they perform than whether we won or lost. Uh, you know, you want your young guys to develop confidence and continue to play well. 
And, you know, if the shots aren't falling, at least play mistake-free basketball. You know, they both did some good things Saturday. They both made some mistakes, you know, playing a, an experienced, talented team like that. And it's just part of the learning process. So, uh, you know, they both practiced well yesterday and they'll be ready to go tomorrow. Final question for coach, Don Doxey. Yeah, Fran, going back to Mike's question about playing on Christmas, will you guys do anything special as a team, either on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, whatever, just to, uh, to since kids won't be able to go home and be with their families, will you guys do anything as a team? We have a very close-knit team, Don. You know, we'll have a nice meal uh, for them. Uh, we'll go a little, a little extra on the meal and, and really celebrate together. You know, but other than that, you know, when you when you play on Christmas Day and you're preparing on Christmas Eve the day before, like we normally would, you know, there's going to be a business like side of that approach. Uh, and I think they understand that. Yeah, Luca, obviously, here, here comes Big Ten season. Now you're going to see a lot of big bodies leaning on you. How I guess, how are you better conditioned this year to play extended minutes in, in, against these kind of teams? Um, you know, I think. You know, I just I prepare myself in the off season, put myself in a position to be out there as long as as, as coach wants me. Um, so you know I feel confident I can play forty minutes a game, um, and, and that's just because I feel like I've you know gotten myself in a shape. And I think you know our whole team is that way. I think we have a lot of guys who you know who can play that many minutes if needed to. David Eichold. Yeah, Luke, after the second Purdue game last year, you kind of, you know, talked passionately post game about just how you guys need to be tougher and step on the floor every single night. Just, I guess, how big of an emphasis is that and how happy are you that Purdue is your opening opponent and you kind of get the chance to really, I don't want to say reprove yourself, but be able to, you know, kind of relish in the past couple games. You know, definitely. I think, you know, losing to them uh, on our home floor on senior day is something that, you know, definitely doesn't sit well with me or anybody on our team for that matter. So I think, and when you go into this game, um, I'm excited about the matchup. You know, I love you know the physicality that Purdue plays with and that everybody plays with in the Big Ten. Um, and we know it's going to be a war, um, you know, especially on the boards, but just in general uh, for all the 50-50 balls. You know, it's going to be a, a game of who who plays with more effort. Mike Klaus, go ahead. Look, what about these matchups? Uh, you've Battled with Travion Williams before. If you could talk about him and then this new guy, this seven foot four guy, have you ever played against anybody this big? And what have you seen from him? You know, I, I think they're both really, really good players. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think Purdue always has somebody who's, you know, kind of that big, you know, whether it's Isaac Haas or, you know, Matt Harms, who was seven three, you know. So I think, you know, I've seen guys of that size from, you know, Purdue before, but, you know, this is probably the, the tallest player against at 7-4 um, and you know he's, he's definitely you know really good for a freshman you know has a really nice touch um, and he's very athletic and moves his feet well for how big he is um, so you know I'm excited about the matchup and Travion he's been really really good since he got to Purdue um, so it's always a fun matchup and you know like I always say you know I'm a competitor I want to play against the best bigs in the country and that's why I'm in the Big Ten. Chad Lysko. Hey, Luca, I know there's no fans at home this year, but uh, is there a reason that you guys shoot better at Carver Hawkeye? Um, is the, Do you shoot better at Carver Hawkeye, do you think? Uh, I don't think so. I think we've had tough nights at, at Carver as well. You know, I think we've only played, you know, one game away from Carver this year. So, uh, you know, that one game we didn't, you know, shoot the ball that well. But, you know, I don't think that's going to – you know, be a determining factor for the rest of our season. Um, I think, you know, we can shoot the ball well from wherever. You know, I think obviously every team in the country, you know, likes likes to shoot better at their on their home gyms just because, you know, you're in there every day working on on stuff and shooting every day and, and you just know what the rim feels like and everything like that. But, you know, I think for us, you know, I think we've only had one game away from Carver, so, you know, it's too early to tell. Um, and I think, you know, we have a good bunch of guys who can shoot really well. And I think, you know, we've shot it well on the road in the past, um, and, and we're going to do that, you know, this year. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Luca, uh, Fran talked about the rebounding, too. You guys got to get better on the boards. I mean, uh, what, what is it you think that's that's lacking right now in your rebounding? Um, you know, I think we got to have, you know, a, a mentality shift in terms of aggressiveness. And I think it's, it's what we had versus North Carolina. Um, I think we... 
we're really, really good on the glass against, you know, the best offensive rebounding team in the country. So I think, you know, we need to keep that mentality and, and use it um, and, and play like that every single game. You know? and, and our focus going into that game was rebounding. And I think that's why we were so keen on it. I think we need to take that into every single game and, and play like that. You know, we have the, the ability to rebound at a very high level with the guys we have. Um, but you know, I think, you know, last game there were some funky bounces and I think, you know, um, you know, we were, we were not getting to the 50-50 balls. So when a ball was bouncing and it was tipped up, you know, they were ending up getting it every time. So, you know, I think it, we need five guys to go to the glass and, and no one leak out or, or whatever the case may be. You know, we need five guys to be in there, boxing out and uh, you know, going up and grabbing, grabbing the rebound. David Eichold. Yeah, Luke, you, you said last year it took you a couple of years to really learn and you know, be able to take lessons from previous games and move on without thinking about the past with, you know, younger guys like Keegan and Patrick. How have you seen them respond following the first loss of the year? And, you know, how tough is it uh, for younger guys to actually be able to, you know, accept the loss and move forward while taking the lessons with them? Yeah, I think those two you know, are very, very mature for being freshmen. Um, so I think they know know what, what it's like and, and and they've learned their lesson you know, we watched the film you know we went into it and, and, and they had a really good mentality yesterday you know, it, was, it was good to see um, but I think you know for a whole team you know we try not to deep to you know, be too concerned with the loss you know, especially when we have another game coming up you know our, our focus you know obviously we had to watch the film analyze the game see where we could get better learn from it uh, but then flush it and, and shift our focus on the Purdue um, because the next game is the most important game on our schedule. John Doxey. Yeah, Luca, looking beyond tomorrow, you guys have a game on Christmas Day, which is a very unusual occurrence. So I'm just wondering what you guys feel about that. Is that a uh, is that something you like? Is it something that, that's going to be tough? I love it. You know, I love to play the game of basketball. It doesn't matter what day of the year it is. So to play on Christmas is, is, is definitely awesome. You know, obviously this year it's it's a lot different with and not being able to travel home and, and, and see families and whatever the case may be. So, you know, I'd you know, rather play um, than anything else. So uh, I'm excited to play. I think it's going to be a great game. But obviously right now, you know, our focus is on Purdue. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Luca, what was your the biggest lesson you learned from that Gonzaga game? And, and I guess how, how happy are you to have such a quick turnaround and got to play Purdue now just three days later? You know, I think there were a lot of lessons to learn from that game. Um, you know, I think definitely, you know, the emphasis is on, you know, rebounding and, and, and defending at a higher level. Uh, but I think when you look at all that, um, and we were still right there with missing 12 free throws and, and only making four threes uh, with all the mistakes we made on, on, on the defensive end. Um, you know, I think that shows what kind of team we have. Um, but like I said, you know, we can't deep, you know, be too, you know, focused on that game. You know, it, it's a game, you know, we lost a game and, and now we're focused on the next one. Um, so. We're very excited to open up Big Ten play. You know, obviously, Gonzaga was a great team and a great matchup for us. And you know, it's something we're going to learn from and keep as motivation for the rest of the year. Uh, but we're focused on, you know, being able to execute the game plan tomorrow. Yeah, CJ, you're heading into a really tough conference play now. I guess how important was that Gonzaga game for you guys to kind of, uh, you know, get yourself ready for these kind of games you're going to be facing now the rest of the year? Yeah, it was a really cool experience. Um, obviously, it didn't turn out the way we wanted. Um, but we were able to learn a lot of things from that game, move into conference play. Um, we all know what's coming. Uh, one of the best leagues in the country. Uh, every night's going to be a grind, so we gotta we got to be ready every night. What was your biggest takeaway from that game, that Gonzaga game? Uh, you know, I think obviously the rebounding, just we didn't play our best basketball uh, as a team, and we still had many chances to cut away and maybe win that game. Um, you know, just looking back at film, there were so many mistakes we made on rotations, defensive rotations, just late, um, boxing out. Um, just so many things that could have changed, and we still could have won that game. That was one of the biggest takeaways for me. Chad Leistico, go ahead. Hey, CJ. Uh, we didn't get to talk to you after the game, I don't believe. So uh, was it? Uh, how tough was it sitting on the bench there with two fouls in the first half in, in such a big game? And Yeah, it was tough. You know, it just you want to be out there with your guys playing, and I wasn't able to do that. But um, I just had to stay mentally locked in um, through that time and through that stretch. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely tough. Uh, I mean, knowing Fran, 
does sit his guys with two fouls. When you get that first, is that something you guys think about uh, in the first half? Uh, no, you don't really think about it. You know, just you're just going out there and playing, um, trying to make the right plays. It's not something that really goes through through my head. But when you get that second one, that's coach's it's coach's call. You just respect that and uh, you just get ready when when your time comes. Okay, further questions for CJ? Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, CJ, looking back at the Purdue games last year, obviously they, they got you twice. Um, there's, was there any commonality in those two games? Anything you could point to? There's a reason why you guys kind of struggled against them? Uh, you know, we just got to be the tougher team. Uh, it's kind of one of the mindsets coach wants us to go in, just being the tougher team. And we got to win the, the war on the glass. Um, that's going to be a big key tomorrow. Uh, so we really just got to get after it on the glass and be a tougher team. David Eichold. Yeah, CJ, for guys like you, Luca, and Joe, who have been around the Big Ten, you know, have suffered losses like this, but have been able to take the lessons and move on. How difficult is it for younger guys like maybe Keegan and, and Patrick to really take the lessons, but fully move on to the next game? How have you seen them respond? Yeah, uh, for, you know, freshmen, they're really mature. Um, you know, that was a great game for them to just kind of see what it's like to play high level teams. Um, and they know what's coming tomorrow and the rest of the, the season. I think they're, they're going to be really prepared. All right, any further questions for CJ? Well, on Saturday, but I guess what were or one or two of the biggest things that you guys learned as a team about yourself following the Gonzaga game? Uh, we definitely learned that uh, we're a better team than what we showed, uh, 100%. And um, it's just going to take fight. Um, we know what we're capable of, and uh, we didn't show it to the best of our ability on uh, Saturday. And we're just, you know, looking to push that, flush that loss, and, you know, move forward. My class. Joe, excuse me. I don't think there's any question that you brought something into that game and added a spark. Uh, how did you feel about how you played against the number one team in the country? Uh, if I'm being honest with you, uh, uh, the spark talk and all that, I don't really pay attention to that. You know, um, just we want to win. And uh, if I come in and we, you know, still lose, it doesn't really matter what I bring because I didn't bring enough, to be honest with you. So uh, we was just. I was looking forward to the win, but we didn't get that. So I have to do more next time. All right, further questions for Joe? David, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, what do you see out of out of Purdue this season? What kind of stands out about them? And you know, how much are you guys looking forward to playing Purdue just after a couple of the games last year against them? Uh, Purdue is a really good team. They're always, they always have a good team. Um, young kids, but they all can ball. You know, um, they're all aggressive. You know, uh, Travion's really good. Eric is really good. Um, Kid Thompson that comes up the pitch is good. Uh, Sasha's really good. Um, they have a really good team. Um, a bunch of young kids, but they know how to play basketball. You know, um, they're not new to this. And uh, we just got to really lock in and uh, pay attention to the scout report and uh, just, you know, um, just play to the best of our ability to go try to get the win. All right. For the questions, anything else for Joe? Go ahead, David. Yeah, Joe, I guess, you know, after having one Big Ten season under your belt, I mean, what do you, how much more prepared do you feel like going into this Big Ten season as opposed to last year? Uh, very prepared. Um, you know, I, I know what's coming. Um, I know how the team is going to play me, play us, play our shooters, play our big men. Um, you know, just I'm ready for everything. You know, I'm ready. I watched film on last year, too, yesterday, the day before, the day before that. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to the Big Ten season. I can't wait for it to start tomorrow, to be honest with you. 